So we have a few questions um, actually regarding uh, the concept of free will in Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, Maimuna asks, uh, I am very confused about the entire concept of Qadr and human responsibility and choice after reading this verse from Surah 76, uh, Surah Dar, uh, regarding following the path of guidance. Mm -hmm. And you cannot will it unless we will. If we cannot even will to see guidance from God, but God is the one who wills it for us to even want guidance, then how are we responsible for misguidance? Uh, is it just God playing all the moves on the chessboard? Please explain. Right. Well, again, I, I mentioned earlier, Imam Tahawi clearly states that this, this is one of the impenetrable aspects of, of, um, of our theology. And every all the Abrahamic religions grapple with this issue. The evidence for determinism is extremely high. M many mathematicians who are not believers are deterministic, like they really believe that the world is completely determined and that, that when you look at all the variables, whatever happens could not have, and n nothing else could have happened. When you take in all the variables, and, and, and so there's that aspect that's very real about life, that things happen and, you know, had, had, like those kids, had they not gone to IHOP, you know? And the Prophet said, lo, to say, use if, it'll open the door of shaitan, because shaitan wants you to grieve. And, and, but, my, but I'm using this as an, uh, an example. You know, had those kids had the food inside the masjid, you could, you could think of a million things that could have been different. But, but when you actually look at the situation, everything came together to create this horrific, perfect storm. Like that person was just right there at that time when those kids were there. And may Allah give them ease and facilitation. Uh, Nabra and her, her family, may Allah give her paradise. She was at the masjid you know, mashallah, and, and doing night prayers. But this is one of the things that makes it very difficult for people to understand. Now that man who did that, we believe he was a moral agent, right? He was a moral agent. Um, and so he's responsible for his actions and, and that, he, that he killed her and that he did it. So, but God allows, the, 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 the free will bargain is that God allows these things to happen. Now, one of the things about God is he can bring good out of evil. And so things do happen, and it's very difficult for us to accept it. But there's two views of the world. And in fact, Fakhruddin al-Razi has an incredible taxonomy of, of people. And, and he begins that all the world can be divided into two, skeptics, and then people that believe that, that the fire burns, that, um, that there's axiomatic truths in the world, like something cannot be and not be at the same time. You know? So he, he divides the world immediately into those two. And then he divides, uh, so there's the skeptics over there. They're just saying, we don't know, you can never know, nobody can ever know. And then there's the other group, and he says that's the majority of people that actually believe that the world has knowledge, that there's knowledge in the world, that we can know things. And from those people, there are people that believe in deductive truths that you can, not just empirical inductive truths, like empirical, like fire burns, but also that, that you, can, you can actually realize things uh, from universals and you can argue from universals. And then he says, and, and that group is the majority. And then he says, from those, you're further divided into people that believe the world was created and then the people believe the world was always here. And he says, the majority think it was created. And then he says, from those, that's further divided into two. Those who think that the world was, was created, that it created itself. This, he, remember, this is, I mean, this is like, uh, we're looking at, uh, he died in, in uh, 1206, I think. So we're looking at a 13th century scholar that nothing's changed. So we have the same people on the planet. This idea that atheists, they're new, and, or new atheism. The new atheists are actually far less sophisticated than the old atheists, which is a general sign of the overall deterioration of everything on this planet. You know, so the, the atheists of the past were actually much more 
uh, rigorous in their arguing and their reasoning, and they, they were more, they, anyway. So, so then he says, for, for those who believe the world is created, they're further divided into two. Those who believe uh, that, there are, uh, that, 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 uh, that there are only sages, and, the, the, and there's no messengers, and he, he calls those the, like the Eastern religions, like Buddhism and Hinduism. And then he says, and then the Abrahamic religions that believe there's messengers. And, and he includes in them the Jews, the, the Christians, the Muslims, and the Zoroastrians. Even though they're not technically Abrahamic, they were considered people of the book, um, that we treat them like people of the book. So that's his taxonomy. And so we believe that that we will be judged according to our actions. The soul has what it earns, and against it are its sins. And, and we believe, inshallah, Allah will show us mercy, because we want mercy, but we do believe that we accrue our actions and that we earn them. It's called kisp, according to the majority of theologians. Some, some of the theologians, their, their more heterodoxic views, actually believed that God... It, they look at God as more deistic, that, that God kind of, you know, the Mu'tazidite believed that he created us and gave us power that enabled us to do our own, so we actually created our own actions. The, the other opinion, which is the Ash'ari and the Salafi position, and they differ on it also, There's, they're closer than, than the Mu'tazidite, which is that God, that, that God, um, the, the, the Ash'aris believe that when it says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ You don't will except Allah wills, that this is, this is what the coming together of the two wills, that nothing can happen that Allah doesn't allow it to happen. And, and He actually creates it even though you earn it. And, and this, is, this is the dominant Ash'ari position. The, 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 the position of the Athari school, which Ibn Taymiyyah and others followed, is that you're doing the action, but Allah is the one that has enabled you, but it's, it's actually your action. So they, the result is the same, and that's why these are really, the differences to me are, are they're problematic, because the, the view of the two is the same, that you earn your actions. It's whether or not it's a direct, immediate creation. It's a new creation, and that's where the Ashadis differ from the Atheri. But we, we believe that we have free will and that people are responsible and that they will be judged. And in the end, only Allah can judge people because there are too many variables. If you look at human history, the vast majority of people, um, I mean, if, if you look in this country, for instance, people didn't know anything about Islam for a very long time. And now all they know is a distorted version of Islam. So we can't judge people. Like, if you, you want to say they're kufar, that's fine, they can have the hukum of kufar, but the kafir is somebody who knows the truth and rejects it. And Imam al-Ghazali was of the view, anyone who's actively searching for the truth is searching, it, it will be saved, even if they die before getting it. And he says that very clearly in Faisal um, al-Tafriqa. And, and he's as orthodox as you can get, according to the dominant view. So. It's a very difficult one, but you have to believe that you are responsible for your actions. Do not blame things on God. But once things have happened, the best thing to do is accept it that that's the qadr. And this relieves you of the burden of like, oh my God, if I only did this or if I only did that. Nothing else could have happened once it's happened. But before it's happened, you have to, you have to see yourself as fully responsible. Once it's happened, you, you, you're responsible if you, if you did something wrong, and hopefully if you did something right, you also get the reward for that. But, but you have to see it as nothing else could have happened. So it's, it's, it's like having bifocals. You know, you just, you can't look at this thing um, without seeing it at these two levels. Allahu ta'ala alam. Jazakallah khair. <laughs>